Today, we take birds flying as a normal and everyday thing, but many people are unaware of how birds got their ability to fly or what they even were before becoming the feathery, beaked masters of the skies that they are today. In this video, we go through the history and observe how the small dinosaurs of the Mesozoic slowly came to dominate the skies to this day. The origin of birds goes back all the way to the Jurassic era, where small, feathery dinosaurs called maniraptors ran and hunted insects and other small animals as food. These maniraptors belong to the dinosaur group called theropods, alongside the tyrannosaurs, spinosaurs and ceratosaurs, but they were different in a few ways. They were smaller and much faster and more agile than their cousins. And more importantly, they had long, three-fingered arms, unlike many of his theropod cousins who had rather small arms. They probably used these arms for hunting prey or climbing. But with time, these arms would slowly evolve to the much more interesting bird wings. Like other theropod dinosaurs, many raptors had feathers but their feathers were somewhat more present and developed than those of other theropods, probably to keep their small bodies warm. They ranged in sizes from 40 centimeters long to 1.5 meters tall, and the smaller ones would slowly go on to evolve into the modern birds we see today. But what's even more interesting is how many species evolve typically bird features completely separately from birds. Anzo Vailai, for example, who was a 1.5 meter tall maniraptor, evolved a toothless beak completely separately from actual birds, and it even had a head crest like the modern day cassowary. And the troodontids had huge brain sizes for dinosaurs, comparable to those of modern birds. They also had large front facing eyes, and their hearing was advanced too, with enlarged ear canals and one ear higher up than the other, which is only seen in some owls today. The first maniraptor that started looking like more of a bird than dinosaur was Archaeopteryx, which lived around 150 million years ago. And here we see some early features helpful for flight, mainly their wing feathers, which were long, stiff and asymmetrically shaped enabling them to provide lift and thrust while gliding. And this is important because feathers are one of the most important factors for flight, with some birds today developing super specialized feathers, like owls for example, who have small serrations on the feather edges that makes them extremely quiet while flying and thus hunting. Archaeopteryx however still had a lot of dinosaur features, like a jaw with sharp teeth, a long bony tail, and enlarged second toes named killing claws. The next step in bird evolution could be seen in Confuciornis. They had beaks without teeth, a shorter tail, and a bony sternum, which are crucial for good balance and powered flight. But the feathers were still not fully developed, it had claws on its wings, and the skeleton was in general more primitive. An interesting group that wasn't a modern bird, but lived alongside them, were Hesperornithes, that were pretty much the prehistoric equivalent of penguins. They were more advanced than Confuciornis, but they actually lost their ability to fly, having a small tail, long body and beak, and webbed feet that were further down their bodies. That doesn't mean that they were the same as modern aquatic birds today though. They still had a few primitive features like small teeth. Not until the late Cretaceous do we see developed modern bird ancestors. These birds diversified into many different genuses across two main orders. Paleognathi, which are mostly made up of flightless birds like ostriches, emus and kiwis. The other one, Neognathi, is made up of all other birds like eagles, ducks, penguins, and parrots. 
and these orders appeared and started diversifying even before the mass extinction that killed the dinosaurs. Growing birds were absolutely unchallengeable in disguise, even with harsh competition from pterosaurs. The primitive species did well too. They were able to compete with pterosaurs and modern birds all the way until the mass extinction, when they die out. The birds that did survive though would go on to reap the benefits of no competition in the skies up to this day, spreading over the continents and becoming the diverse and beautiful clade that they are. If you found this video enjoyable, please click the like button and subscribe for better future videos. Have a nice day.